So I've had an awful lot of people ask me, we've put out a couple of videos concerning evil twins, and asking me, what the heck is an evil twin? Well, an example of an evil twin is our Suzuki. It's an 82, a GS1100E, and there was a time that I wanted to have a little bit different bike. I had, had, I had for many years, had the same paint job on the bike, and what I wanted to do is have another one. Well, I wanted the West Cooley one, so what I did, I bought a spare GS1100 twin that became the evil twin. So what had happened is I bought this bike real inexpensively. Ray helped me to actually, we went to Philadelphia and got it. And I used the wheels for one of my projects and I used the tank and all, all the body work. Painted it up in a, a custom West Cooley. There really is no 82 version of a West Cooley bike. They're all 1000s. But what happened was it, it made me think even more. This is, this is a really inexpensive thing. A really cool way to have two bikes for the price of one. Now, a lot of people don't, they don't really consider all the implications of if you have a motorcycle and what happens is they get bored with the motorcycle. You have it for four, five, ten years. Oh, I want a new bike. Well, when you get a new bike, you've got to re-register it. In the case of these historic bikes, you've got to pay for the registration. These are registered for life and they're free. So what happens is if I were to buy another one, I'd have to go through that whole process of Re, you know, going through the motor vehicle and getting it registered and insuring it and everything. Where, if I just change the original bike, put another set of bodywork on it, a new paint job, a different set of wheels or something, I have the feeling that I've had a new bike without having to buy a new bike, and and without having to pay for it. So being honest, this whole evil twin thing started back in the 70s for me, and what happened was, I had a bunch of. Yamaha 350s that and 400s that all had been in accidents. I had six or seven of them. And what I would do whenever I'd get bored with the bike, I'd take another gas tank and another. The fenders were chrome at the time, so you didn't even have to paint the fenders. I'd get the tank and the side cover and the oil tank. And what I'd do it was pretty simple. I just painted a different color. And so one year I had a red bike, and then I put a blue set on, then a green set or whatever, and. Everybody thought I had a lot of bikes. Well, I really didn't. I never re-registered them or anything like that. I just cosmetically changed them, and I had the feeling, change the bars, change the seat or whatever. And I called that, that whole thing Evil Twins. Now, I made this cafe seat years ago. It's been on and off the bike over maybe four or five years. And what happens is I can snap it on with two, actually two cotter pins and two pins. So then, now what I have is I have a cafe bike, I ride around for a couple of weeks, and then I put the stock seat back on, and I have a stock bike. So now we get to the point of today's video, and it's kind of, it's, it's even simpler than you can imagine, but I think this is something. Give you some food for thought, something you might want to try yourself, something that's not a lot of money, and it is a lot of fun. It's Evil Twins. So this is really Evil Twins, R1 version. And what I wanted to do, I've had this bike going on 11 years. I've had it in many configurations. It had clip-ons. It had several sets of handlebars. I have six different seats for the bike. I painted the wheels just to give it a new look, a fresh look, something different. I've made an exhaust system for it, made several little carbon fiber parts I made myself. But it's always been, and probably from about the time I had it a year old, it's been a Ferrari bike, and we've had a lot of fun with that. We had the red Ferrari bike and the blue Ferrari bike. It was a lot of fun over the years. But now it's time for Evil Twins to kick in. So to do a really right Evil Twin rendition, there's a couple of requirements. The requirements are you've got to be able to do it relatively easily. And in this case, the stickers come right on and we're right off. So at some future time, we might want to put it back to being a Ferrari bike. And by the way, thank you, John Cafaro, who provided us with all the, uh, the gel stickers. And they were very, very difficult to, to find, actually real ones. John provided them. They've gone over many years. But now we're going to change the whole look of the bike with a few simple things. First, the first is I have the Yamaha. The racing ones are gold. The street ones are silver. We have the racing one that goes on the tank. 
And I have ordered from Partzilla. It's a, it was only available on the 2010. It's a gel R1 that really, I think, really is an attractive thing. In fact, when I had this bike in the 10s, this is an 09, the 10s came out. I wanted to do it back then, but then I put the Ferrari on. But it's going to change the whole look of the bike. It In one one thing will change the whole look of the bike. And that's the whole idea of any evil twin. Now, the mufflers, when I made the mufflers, it was the same thing. And I was very careful to do it in such a way that I could take the stock mufflers, put them back on anytime I wanted. If, if you ever have that itch you need to scratch. When I painted the wheels, I was tempted at the time to just buy an extra set of wheels. They were available. And I said, hmm. But if I ever do have to, if I ever have the opportunity again to get a set of wheels, I'd like to have a set of gold wheels. I, lo I love the silver ones. And on the, the project we're going to do this winter, we're going to mix our own gold paint. I'm going to go through that in detail, how that worked out. But again, what I have, this is a, a 2009 R1 that I'm going to evil twin it out. And Partzilla, by the way, if you go to Partzilla, there's something really cool about it. They have, and this is a perfect example I'm going to use. First off, they have the trim that would be on a stock bike that's like a stripe. Then they have one for the 2010 that's totally different. Then they have one that's like almost like the Kenny Roberts stripe for the 2011 or the 2012, and I don't even remember. But all of those stickers are still available from Partzilla. So once you have the old stickers, let's say this, this originally came, and somewhere on this video I'll put a picture of what the bike looked like when it was new. I took the stickers off. I wanted at the time to make it into the Ferrari bike, but... If I wanted to right now, I could just go back and buy those stickers from Partzilla. Now, the only problem with those stickers, some of them are a little pricey. Not all of them, some of them. And what I did, I very carefully did when I did this whole project years ago. When I made these carbon fiber parts, I saved all the original ones. So if I ever want to put the bike back to total stock, just for fun, I can do it. When I made the exhaust system, I saved all the covers. Now, on a stock R1... This has the most cumbersome cover, I guess, so you don't burn your leg. This isn't polished. And when you look at it, a lot of times you don't realize how many little details there are. But then all of a sudden you stand back and go, wow, that looks a whole lot different than a stock bike. And that's the case anytime you're doing an evil twin. You want to do things that are easy to do, that change the look of the bike, don't cost a lot of money, and, and basically that you can put back to stock a couple of years later, and then you go back to having a stock bike for a while. Now, when I first bought the R1, I was really unhappy with the seat. It didn't fit my, my behind is a little, I guess, different than what the, the test rider had. And so Elaine Brookins made me a seat. I made a few myself. I did all the foam work, and I made one real skinny and one with way more padding than stock. I did a lot. This, In fact, I even made one that, that almost worked that I was happy with. And I made two of these, these extra things. These are made out of wood, by the way, and they go on the back. And I have, I can vary it. I have one that you sit a little further forward in the bike and one you sit a little back. The one that's on the bike right now is the one where you sit a little forward. But again, I, the nice thing about this, it evil twins the bike out. And you can always just put it right back to the way it was. Or you can do it on every six months, change it. And you always have the feeling the first time you ride the bike, oh, I've got a new bike. It's kind of like a brainwashing yourself. And I guess I'm easy to brainwash. Now, I even, I made this piece out of carbon fiber. This, is, this was a relatively hard piece to make. It's made out of opeachy wood and then covered with carbon fiber layer laminate. And the thing with this was, when I originally bought the bike, I thought I was going to be doing a lot of track days. And I thought, oh, this will be really like, like a track day seat. It'll be almost no padding sit a little lower on a bike, be a little, little easier to get your knee down on the ground. And I did, I used it on a street for a year or two before I, before my rear end wore out. So then I got, you can see how little padding is on there. But again, if you were just doing track days, the thing that allows, I have two bolts and I can change this seat out, put the stock seat back on in a matter of two minutes. It changes the whole feel of the bike. Now, anybody that's watched any of the videos over the years knows, in the beginning, 10 years ago, actually 10 years ago when I bought the R1, I was 
I was okay with clip-ons because I've had several back issues and several, uh, oh, I don't know, therapies or whatever on my back. I'm, I'm limited now to only riding bikes that have handlebars. When I ride Luciano's bikes that have clip-ons, sometimes I'm really hurting in about 10 minutes. So this is another thing. Once you get a bike set to your, see, always that the seat fits, you have the pegs that you're happy with them. In this case, we have these nice rubber pegs that I really were an upgrade over the solid ones. There's, once I get all of the little ergonomics figured out on a bike and I'm happy with them, now I don't want to, if I want to have a red bike next year, I don't or want to put this back to being a Ferrari bike or whatever. Well, I can't really put it back without buying a couple of the bodywork pieces and buying a tank. But this is a commitment in... I wanted this bike. I pretty much now this bike will not be an evil twin anymore. He'll be a, a one, I guess, one dimension bike. But I noticed that you can still buy the track day fairing. And on eBay, Luciano just got a whole set of Ducati fairings on eBay for about 200 bucks. So if I ever want to change this again, all I will really need to do is find a tank because I have a spare seat. And always thinking about what you can change. And, and usually the biggest single thing you can change on a bike is the paintwork. Just changing the paintwork, it's like getting a new bike. Now, I know some of my friends, they just enjoy buying and selling motorcycles for whatever reason. And that's fine. I don't. I don't like negotiating with people. I don't like selling things and having them negotiate with me. What I do like to do is I have four historic bikes that are registered for life. So as an example, for this bike, I have a spare bike, I have a spare tank, and I have a spare set of bodywork. So at some future time, if I want to make another, I don't want to change the bike. I don't want to do any major changes, but I would need little parts or oh, whatever I still need, and I don't even know. But I do have the bodywork. It would need a lot of Bondo work, or I can get eBay bodywork. And what it would allow me to do is then to make, let's say, for example, a red bike with a whole different paint job on it. And to me, that would be a lot more attractive than looking out on the internet for another bike, paying whatever it would cost, getting another set of historic plates, which can be a little bit of a challenge if you don't have pictures of the original bike. And in this case, what makes it even more attractive, I have a spare set of wheels. So I can change the look of this bike just by putting the black wheels on. And not sure when I'll do that, but the nice thing, it's like being an old lady with a lot of pocketbooks. You can just go reach in and get a pocketbook. You don't have to, you don't need to go for plastic surgery. Now in this bike, the hardest part of the whole bike to make were these, these carbon fiber parts. These are not available from anybody at any price. And to make these, I made these with a mold. This was really a difficult thing because at the time I bought the bike when it was new, I didn't want to have the stock headlights. I put the high intensity bulbs in. And what I wanted to have, this had the look of, at the, at the time this bike was new, Josh Hayes was the dominant force in superbike racing. I wanted it to look like Josh Hayes' bike. In fact, I went down to, I still have the video, in fact, to watch him race at Millville and and chatted with them for a few minutes. And what would happen is when you when you bought an R1 in 09, they gave you one free track day. No, in the course of the last couple of years, I've come to a surprising thing of how, how important it is for me, may not be for you, I know other people, that they live with a very poor rear vision. I am committed to having the rear vision that it's comfortable for me and I'm not straining my neck because most of the rides I go on are relatively 100, 100 to 150, maybe sometime 200 miles. And what happens at the end of those rides, the last hour or so, can really get tedious if your neck is sore or your shoulder. So I've committed to every time I do anything with the bike to have the mirrors that I really want to have. Now, I've done it to this bike. That was a real big upgrade on the mirrors. When we do the black bike, the 650 over the winter, I'm going to definitely upgrade the mirrors. And in fact, what I'm going to do when I do it, I'm going to make two sets. So if I tip the bike over and scratch a mirror in the middle of the summer, I don't have to go through this whole thing of painting mirrors. The thing with painting mirrors, once you start painting them, it's easy to paint two sets, the same as a set of, as one set. 
But to paint, and when I got these, it was already in the middle of the summer, and uh, I don't want to take time off and paint them. Now, Luciano had given me a set of mirrors. Well, actually, it was one mirror for the, uh, they were real RD mirrors, and I couldn't get them adjusted. I wasn't happy with them. I just went out and bought, <laughs> bought buy more mirrors. It, it seems like I probably bought $200 worth of mirrors, but every bike here has mirrors I can see out the back, and I counted that as one of the biggest upgrades this year that I didn't have last year. So Partzilla sent me a thing that my parts have been back ordered for two weeks. When we get them, I'll make the video putting them on, but taking these stickers on and off with a heat gun, relatively easy, or a hair dryer, just got to be real careful. And I'm not going to not ride the bike waiting for them, but I will be getting those, the R1s that'll, that again will change the bike a lot. Now, and I'll always have the choice of putting the Ferrari stickers back on. I'll always have the choice of getting a set of black wheels and just changing the wheels out, I know, makes a big difference. But I like always having the ability to put it back the way it was. That's the key thing. In fact, in this bike, I can put it back almost to like the day I bought it. Very few exceptions. Probably the hardest part would be all the hardware that goes into putting those headlights in. If you've ever taken an R1 apart, you know, there, this is a, a major job to get all that stuff in. That piece of the fairing, when it comes off, and the headlights and everything are in there, it's it's a major job. It's, it's very similar to when you go to change a starter in an R1, you better have a lot of time on your hands, at least if you're at low skill level like I am. So anyway, that was a few things. I'm going to end the video with some pictures of some of my other evil twin projects. And if you look at how I had this bike over the years, in the almost 11 years now, it's really been a lot more than one motorcycle. So I hope you enjoy my few uh, few photos from my photo album. I thought I'd end this video by just showing some of the old pictures that I have of the two Ferrari bikes, which, now the red one, of course, it would be very difficult to put back to being a Ferrari bike, but I'm being very careful with the blue bike to save all the stickers. And of course, you just need to put the adhesive on the back. The adhesive, by the way, is available to re-put stickers back on gel stickers. You can get from any auto body supply. It's, it's really a good sticker uh, glue because it allows you with a heat gun to take it back off again. It's made for putting on body molding, and I don't have any right here or I'd show it up on camera. But anyway, always want to be able to go back, put the bike back the way it was stock, and always have the choice of, having an evil twin with a very little, very little, or uh, almost no work, really, in the case of just swapping stickers out, paint a little bit more intensive, and having a set of wheels, a little extra money. Here we have black wheels, and I think the silver wheels on the, the blue R1 really worked out great. The black wheels on the, what now now is the yellow FCR, worked out great. I, I just don't think it could have gone any better. Now, those last the last two things that I've shown here, the this bike has the head, the blue bike has the headlights on it still. Making those headlight inserts was really a labor of love. That was unbelievable how much time that took to do. And here you have the big seat on the seat with the backrest. That's kind of cool. I like swapping that out from time to time. But the biggest thing I like about this bike more than anything else is I have enough interchangeable parts that anytime I get bored. It's, it's just like having a, a wardrobe with a lot of clothes. You can just go re-outfit it anytime you want. And we'll be doing that in the future. But for now, we're just waiting for Partzilla to come through with those R1 stickers from the 2010. And they said two to three weeks. Well, you know, that's the kind of thing I'll believe when I see it. So hope you did enjoy the video and enjoy all the videos we make. And thanks for watching.